So today, uh, I will present our work, Every Truck, a very precise indoor location systems. So this is a joint work uh, between me and my supervisor, Dr. Carl Jamison. So nowadays, the location systems are playing a very important role in our everyday life. In the outdoor environment, we have GPS, and GPS is very accurate for navigation service, which only requires a meter's accuracy level. However, GPS does not work well in the indoor environment because the signals fade. And there are a lot of interesting indoor applications that require very precise information to be provided, such as augmented reality on the smartphones and, and maybe very, in, very soon in the future on the variables and the glasses. And also, when we're trying to locate a particular product in a supermarket, when we're trying to find a book in a library, and when we're trying to find a piece of artwork, artwork in the museum, also, when we try to control the network access based on locations such as a desk or a room, there are a lot of uh, interesting indoor location systems proposed. Some of them are not very accurate, and some of them uh, require dedicated infrastructure to be installed. And there are some other systems that have some specific requirements. So now let's have a look at these indoor location systems proposed. So in earlier 1992, uh, the active badge system was proposed by Cambridge. They utilized the infrared trying to provide a meters accuracy level in the indoor environment. And the cricket and the bat, both utilizing the ultrasound to do indoor localization. They are very accurate. However, they require dedicated infrastructures to be installed. And 2008, there are some image-based uh, location system proposed, and they require very good light conditions. The majority of the work is based on Wi-Fi, and in 2000, radar system was proposed. They provide two to three meter of accuracy level. The problem is they require a lot of calibration beforehand, and the tick system trying to remove the calibration but sacrifice the performance. And the Horus use the probabilistic method trying to increase the accuracy level. And also easy, they use GPS signals to help in the calibration phase, and the Z, uh, they use uh, crowdsourcing to help in the calibration phase, and the pin lock is trying to uh, identify one, one meter times one meter blocks. And also uh, this year, also in the same conference, the pin point was proposed. Uh, they are using the cyclostationary uh, signatures trying to identify the, trying to identify the interference, and uh, we are proposing every truck which we can achieve 23 median accuracy. So now let's have a look how every truck works. So our work is based on two observations. The first observation is we find there are more and more antennas attached to a particular AP. And this is mainly due to 11M MIMO technology and also 11AC, which will be finalized earlier next year. And 11AC will support eight MIMO spatial streams, which means at least eight radio board, radio, eight, eight antennas. And we can find a lot of uh, commercial access points already on the market with four antennas, six antenna, even 14 and 16 antennas. The second observation is Wi-Fi is ubiquitous. We have Wi-Fi now even on the airplane, on the subway, on the buses. And also in the urban environment, the density of IP is still increasing. So our approach is we trying to utilize this unique opportunity. We have a lot of, a a lot of antennas attached to a particular AP and also a lot of APs are nearby. So when there's a client and one AP with multiple antennas, once this client transmit anything, this AP will generate, will utilize these multiple antennas to generate a kind of a physical angle of arrival information, which we call AOA spectrum. And if, if we have multiple APs, they can both have this kind of AOA spectrum generated and trying to localize this client. So now let's have a look at the basic theory behind our work. So for any wave propagating in the air, for any lambda, which is a wavelength, one wavelength of propagation, the phase change will be two pi. So if, if the distance between the client and the antenna is d, the phase change we can measure at the AP side is two pi times d over lambda. Now let's consider if there are two antennas, multiple antennas at the AP side. So now, 
if the client is not on the perpendicular bisector of the two antennas, then the distance between the first between the client and the two antennas will be different. We still keep the distance between the between the client and the first antenna as D. Then the distance between the client and the second antenna will be D plus some extra part I marked as blue there. So for the wave to propagate this amount of extra distance, the phase measured at the AP side will be some extra amount of phase change. So by measuring this phase change, actually we can find the angle theta, which is the angle of arrival. And this can be generalized to multiple antennas and uh, with multiple signals coming at the same time. So what's the challenge here? If we want to utilize this angle of, of, of arrival information to localize clients. So the challenge is there are very strong multipath reflections in the indoor environment. And furthermore, the direct path sometimes are attenuated or even blocked. So which means if we choose the strongest signal as a direct path, it's not, it's not always true. And I use a simple animation to demonstrate this idea. So once this client transmit, the direct path, which is a gray path, gray path actually is attenuated. So the signal is not as strong as the reflection path, which is a blue, blue path. So if we generate the angle of arrival signature, we can find the peak circled as gray, which is a direct path. It's not as stronger as the peak circled as blue. So how we handle this kind of uh, uh, multipath reflection uh, for every truck. So our key observation is the direct path bearing is more stable than the reflection path bearings when the client moves slightly. And this kind of uh, slight movement is very common in our everyday life. So for example, when you are calling with your phone, even you are sitting there static, but actually there's some natural body movement. And with this kind of body movement, we can capture several packet and we can identify which one is a dark path and which one is a reflection path. So now let's see the animation here. When the client the, is, is at the beginning stage at the first location marked as a red dot, the AP can have one signature generated. Once this client moves slightly to the second position, we have another signature generated. Once we have these two signatures from, very, from two very nearby locations, now we can find the peaks of this signature. And then we group these two spectrum and we find, compare the, the bearing peaks to see whether they are paired. What, what do I mean by paired? So paired, which means the bearing, the angle is close to each other. So here we can see the, uh, the two bearings circled as purple, as purple circle. They are quite close to each other. So they are identified as dark paths and the, the peak circled as, as green there's no any peak paired with, with, with it. So it's considered as dark path. So we just remove this one and only keep the dark path. And here, the dark path is not the strongest. So now let's see the detail how every track work. So the first step for every track to work is we need to detect the packet and record some part of the packet for processing. So as long, because our every track only cares about the face information, the content and the modulation scheme does not matter. Also, we choose we choose every truck to work with the most robust preamble part. And another good prob property of every truck is that we only require a very small part of the packet. For a 40, meg 40 megahertz sampling rate, one sample actually is a 25 nanosecond. And if there's no noise, actually one sample works for our every truck. And I show the figure on the right hand side. You can see even there in, in real life, there's noise. When we increase the number of uh, samples to like uh, five to 10, the signature is uh, very, very stable already. So for our every truck, we choose N equals to 10. And we can see 10 samples is, is still a very small part in the, in the preamble. And another property um, we utilize in our system is because the existing systems, 11N, they utilize this diversity synthesis to increase the throughput. And we want to utilize this technology trying to increase the number of antennas we can utilize. So I use animation to show how we, how we are doing this. So first we will record the 10 samples with antenna one, it's a red. Then we will switch to antenna two and record another 10 packets. And note here, we only have one radio board but two antennas attached to it. Because 
these two antennas are sharing the same radio, and also we, we can have some repeating parts in the preamble. The content of red and blue are the same. So by applying this method, actually we doubled the number of antennas we can utilize. And now, after we have the samples recorded, the next step is uh, we want to generate the angle of arrival spectrum. We utilize a music algorithm, which is a generalization of the mathematics I described before. However, music does not, does not work well in the indoor environment because of coherent signal. And the reflection and the direct, direct path signal, they are considered coherent signals because they are exactly the same frequency. The only difference is the phase. So we utilize the spatial smoothing to handle the coherent signal problem. And I uh, briefly describe what is spatial smoothing here. So when we have an antenna array with eight antennas here, we divide the antenna group to two groups, two subgroups. The first group with antenna one to seven, second group with two to eight. And for all the following matrix processing, we do an average between, between these. And this will break the coher coherency uh, between the direct path signal and reflecting path signals. And I show the angle rival information generate, generated here. We can see without spatial smoothing, um, we can have some kind of uh, spectrum generator. But once we apply the spatial smoothing, uh, the lobe is sharper, and those smaller peaks appear. So now all the APs, they have the angle rival information generated. Then in the, in, the, in the region, for any particular random position x, actually we can generate kind of a probability map, probability map. So this probability map, the probability is just the user multiplication from several APs. So we can see the intersection is a probability. And af after we obtain the probability map, then we use the standard um, hill climbing algorithm to sample and search the whole region and find the uh, highest probability point very quick and very efficiently. So for our implementation, we use a warp platform. We, for each AP, we have two warps, and each with four radio balls, so eight antennas. So with two warps, actually, the maximum antenna we can have is a 16. And we only use um, four to nine antennas for our experiments. And we customize the FPGA design with the Xilinx system generator for packet synchronization, diversity synthesis, and we synchronize the two warps. For the clients, we use circuit boxes equipped with 11 radios. Also, uh, for the server side, uh, we implement it uh, in MATLAB to work with WAP. So for the testing environment, uh, we evaluate our system in a medium size, uh, typical office, which accommodate around 50 uh, PhD students. We, we uniformly distribute all the clients as the red dot here, and we deliberately put some clients behind like uh, the pillar or near to the wood, uh, plastic, metal to make our results comprehensive. And the AP are, pl are placed uh, at positions marked black. And we assume all the APs know their location. So evaluation. The first question we want to ask is, if the client is 100% static, if we cannot apply the multipath suppression, what's the accuracy, accuracy level we can achieve? So just with music and spatial smoothing. So the result is shown here. Without multipath suppression, just with music and spatial smoothing, with three APs, four APs, and uh, six APs, in general, when we increase the number of APs, the result is becoming better. This is a CDF plot. We can see when we increase the number of APs to six, the median accuracy we can achieve is around 26 centimeters. And even if, if we have only three APs, we can achieve around 80 uh, centimeter accuracy. And this is a pretty good result. Then we want to see if the clients, it's, it's kind of a, there's some, some kind of a movements with the clients, we can apply multipath suppression, how every truck can further improve the performance. So I plot the figure, like uh, four uh, subplots. Each one is uh, with different number of APs and a comparison between with and without multipath suppression. We can see with uh, six APs, actually the two lines are very close to each other. And the intuition behind this is, when there are a lot of APs, the true location will be naturally strengthened. So even without multipath suppression, still, it works pretty well. However, when we decrease the number of APs, there's some long tails, and multipath suppression can help to remove these long tails and increase the accuracy level. 
So our conclusion is the fewer APs, the more important is a multipath suppression algorithm. If you have a lot of APs, you don't even need this kind of multipath suppression to identify which one is a direct or which one reflection because the AP, more number of APs will naturally strengthen the true location. And some results interesting I will show here. So the best results we can achieve at this point of time is uh, the red line, every truck. Actually, in general, on average, six AP will give us better results. But for particular clients at a particular position, actually, it's not necessarily true. Sometimes if we choose five APs or four APs, we can have better results, which means if you increase one extra AP, the results will go down a little bit. So we collect all the different combinations, like uh, choose four out of six, choose five out of six, choose three out of six, and choose the best results we can achieve and plot this. This one is a post-processing. We cannot achieve at this point of time. And we can see the median accuracy actually decreased significantly. And we believe this is something worth to put more effort to investigate in the future. And the next uh, property of every truck I want to show is uh, uh, if we have different number of antennas attached to the AP, how this will affect our performance. So I show results with four antennas, six antennas, and eight antennas. We can see the results like uh, continue smoothly, becomes better. And uh, this is uh, because with more number of antennas, we can capture more number of signals at the same time. And also, if you look at the AOS spectrum, the, the lobes become sharper. So with even like uh, six APs and four antennas, we can achieve around one meter median accuracy. And the last evaluation is we want to see when the client AP, there's some high difference, will this greatly affect our performance? Because in reality, Normally, the, the APs, they are mounted on the ceiling, like a three meters or four meters high. When you are using the, your phone, it's around like a 1.5 meter. There will be some high difference between the client and the AP. So we want to see whether this high difference will greatly affect the every truck's performance. Uh, we have some mathematics proof in the appendix. We show with this kind of a 1.5 meter high difference, when the distance between the client and the AP is four meters, the area introduced is around 4%. And when this distance increases to 10 meters, the area is around 1%. And also our, ex our experimental results demonstrate this. And we can see with some heights and without heights, actually the results are more or less, a, more or less a close to each other. And the median results are all close to like a 25 centimeters. So now I conclude our work. So today I present a very accurate indoor location system we call every truck. It's robust, it's a fast, and it's responsive. For three APs, we can achieve one meter accuracy level, median accuracy level. For, three, for six APs, we can achieve around 23 centimeter median accuracy level. And we employ novel uh, multipath suppression algorithms and also the diversity synthesis algorithms to increase the number of antennas that we can utilize. Also, we don't use any dedicated infrastructures. It's robust against low SNR and the collision. And you can refer this uh, for detail in our paper. And also it's fast and responsive because when the client is 100% static, we only need one packet. When it's like a, mo when it's like a semi-static, we need like a two or three packets. And uh, we would like to evaluate uh, our array truck system's performance in the future, like uh, 3D trucking with two-dimensional array. And uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much. So I'll ask a question. Um, so the client, I have a question about the experimental setup. So the client, what, does it have a single antenna? Does it have multiple antennas? How would MIMO on the clients affect things, if at all? So for all the evaluation we are like performing now, we assume the client has only have one antenna because if if antenna if the client have multiple antenna, actually there's some small difference in the location of the several clients, several antennas. So we assume the client now only have one antenna and the AP side have like multiple antennas and all the work is done at the AP side. And if in the future, like for MIMO, even at the client side there are multiple antennas, I think uh, as long as, as we can identify like uh, which antenna is like transmitting, we can do the same thing as every truck doing now.
Right, I can imagine you do have multiple antennas, but it's not like they're very far apart, right? It's not as if the AOA spectrum would necessarily be very divergent unless you had multipath effects. And even then, you can filter those out. So I'm not sure it would be a big problem, but I was just, I was just wondering. And so then, uh, one other question it had to do with, you said, if you pick the optimal subset of the APs, well, that makes sense. You have noisy measurements. And so if you pick the set of measurements which are the least noisy, yeah, of course you can get a better result than including the ones that are noisy, but you can't sort of, you know, after the fact, know which ones are noisy or not. So could you talk a little bit about that? Okay, actually, uh, we explore a little bit on why the optimal subsets will give us better results. Actually, I think um, mainly it's because sometimes there are some clients that are really close to the AP. Because we measure the angle information, if the clients are really far away, like 20 or 30 meters away from the, from the AP, if the angle area is like one degree, it will cause a lot of uh, errors. So if in the future, we can like know which one is a close, which, which, which AP is close to this client, actually we can choose, we, we believe this is one of the factors which will cause the subs optimum subset, but we are not sure whether this is all. Hi, I thought this was totally awesome. Uh, I'm wondering, do you need to know the exact location and orientation of each AP? Oh, actually, I have I one back slide here. So I also run some experiments like uh, with diff different kind of orientations of the antennas at the AP side and the client side. And actually, the result is like a little bit worse. And we believe that's because um, the, the antennas we are using is like a linear polarized. And if, if they are perpendicular to each other, the signal to noise level will be like a decrease 20 dB or even 30 dB. So if in the future we use like a circular polarized antenna or like in the phone, those kind of antennas, I think our perform performance will be like more or less the same. Do you think if you start out with the AP positions and orientations unknown, you might be able to bootstrap it just by having the APs listen to each other? Um, can, you, can you repeat your question? Well, if you don't know exactly where each access point is, or oh, you haven't measured, and you don't know their orientation of the linear array, I do you see. think you could bootstrap it by having each AP receive the other AP's transmissions? Uh, I think it's uh, definitely possible. We, ha we haven't done this. At this point of time, we assume we know the location and the orientation of the, of the APs. But yeah, that's true. And maybe we can do in the future, maybe like a self-calibration of the AP. They can identify their own location, also the orientation of the, by listening to each AP, yes. Good question. All right, thank you. Uh, Sheng Bing Zhang from UC Santa Barbara. So uh, do you, uh, are you guaranteeing that each measurement has a line of sight component, or do you have to filter out that case? Uh, no, actually we don't, we don't assume like a no line, line of sight or no line of sight. Actually, it's okay. If the, if the, block, if the direct path is uh, attenuated, it's absolutely fine. It won't affect the performance of every truck. The, the only concern is uh, when sometimes when the direct path is 100% uh, blocked, like a uh, metal. But still, we believe uh, if we have multiple APs, it's not likely like all the direct paths from this client to all the APs are blocked at the same time, simultaneously. So at least some APs, we can have some direct paths with this client. If you block the client with some metal, like uh, all around, yes, every truck will fail. <laughs> 